Detroit basketball. From growing up in Alabama to playing in community college, being undrafted. And Wallace stares it off the glass. Already six rebounds. It didn't win the popularity contest in terms of playing in the NBA All-Star game. But I guarantee you, this guy probably should be NBA Defensive Player of the Year. That was a great defensive play by Ben Wallace. Oh, what a block by Wallace! Wow, that was beautifully timed by Ben Wallace. Time NBA Defensive Player of the Year now becomes the first ever undrafted player to make it to the Hall. And away from the basketball court, Big Ben is an Brown awesome. We want Ben as you look at Lou Williams. All right, and action. So good. Um, as far as my upbringing, you know, I'm uh, originally from Alabama. You know, uh, born and raised in um, Alabama, a small town, you know, called Whitehall, Alabama. You know, just growing up in a very rural, you know, poor area where um, where you basically had to go out and work for everything that you wanted. You know, um, the schools and, you know, um, in the area that we lived in, you know, was 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 small. So, you know, you get what you need as far as um, that one on one time and, you know, as far as uh, getting education and you know, also in high school, we was required to take, you know, trades like, you know, brick mason, building construction, electronics and stuff like that as well. So, you know, I played basketball, football, baseball, softball, ran track and field. You know, I was just, just all around athlete. And um, so as far as the love for basketball, that, that came late in my life. You know, I was, all through high school, I was pretty much football player. Football, football was my thing. And uh, my senior year sort of had a, a neck injury um, playing football and, you know, just sort of turned my energy towards basketball after that. And, um, you know, put all my time and effort into basketball out there. I got hurt playing football. After I left community college, you know, I had all, I had tons of D1 offers, you know, um, a lot of schools were called, a lot of schools were looking at me, but, but I didn't, um, I didn't graduate from the community college, so, so that, um, that limited my options. And, um, you know, I thought the, the next best um, school was, the, was Virginia Union. My time at Virginia Union, man, it was, um, you know, I was um, Division II All-America, you know, CIAA MVP, you know, team MVP, Defensive Player of the Year, you know, Coca-Cola All-American. And, um, you know, for the, but for the most part, it was just a fun time, man. You know, we, you, at the end of your career or your end of your um, college time, when you're leaving school, that's when you start to think about the accolades. But when you're there, you know, um, you really don't think about those things because, you know, the school within itself was um, great as far as keeping you grounded and keep you locked in on what you need to be doing. Um, in 1996, when the, when the draft came around, you know, um, you know that 96 draft class is, you know, it's arguably the best draft class ever. And um, anybody who didn't get drafted in that class, you know, you 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 sort of know why. When I didn't hear my name, you know, um, I went back to the gym and um, I hit the weight room and I just repped out to everybody who got called. So, you know, for me it was motivation and it was. Uh, it was nothing that I wasn't used to. You know, I was sort of had, at that point in my, my life, as far as my basketball career, I was sort of getting used to being looked over. You know, when you stop look, listening at the naysayers on why you should or why you couldn't or why you can't, and um, you figure out that you and this dog fight by yourself, and you start doing it for yourself, you know, it makes the most, it makes all the, all the difference. And um, you talk about getting that one stop when the team needed, you know, we talking about going the extra mile and doing this and doing that. You know, um, I was motivated to do those things for myself. You don't like to be coached. If you don't like people to tell me what to do, then you make sure you take care of your business and you do your job. You know, that was my motto. I was gonna, I always was gonna step out there and was gonna give it everything I had because I refused to be out work. You know, in 1996, after, after not being drafted, you know, I had a um, tryout with the Celtics. That didn't work out in my favor. 
And um, then I ended up going over to Italy, playing with um, a team over in Europe. And um, finally I got a call from Wes Unsell saying that he was, um, he wanted me to come in and work out. And I explained my situation and and it was funny because I told him, you know, I'm over in, I'm over in Europe, you know, I'm playing, you know, I got a contract and I don't want to, I don't want to leave my contract to come back for what may just turn out to be a tryout or whatever. And um, so he called me back a second time. And if you know Wes, <laughs> you can kind of imagine how the conversation went with, with um, it was like, like, boy, you effing crazy. Like, you know, like, uh, you know, get back over here and, and, um, and um, attend this workout or whatever. So, you know, I came back for the workout and at that point in my career, I feel like I was a pro. There's no two ways about it. Like I'm, you know, I'm, I'm the best, in the best shape, you know, at the best, at the best time that I, that I really need to prove this point that I'm a professional player and I'm ready to play uh, professional basketball. So when I came back to Washington and uh, when Wes explained to me, like we got 15, 16 guys that's competing for two spots. And uh, they said, I'm gonna take one guard, I'm gonna take one big. So so me, I took that conversation as, you know, you, you're looking for your guard, you already got the big that you need right here. And you know that's how I, that's how I approach the workouts, man. I just went out there and just just gave everything I had. You know, getting here, you know, and understand what this uh, what this franchise is all about. You know, I'm um, looking at the names on the wall. You know, knowing, you know, the reputation, you know, of those championship teams. You know, um, as far as basketball go, you know, I feel like I was at home. Like, you know, I think this this organization fit my style of play. This team fit my style of play. You know, this city fit my style of play. But to come here in a way that the fans and the city and the organization embraced me when I got here and um, gave me an opportunity to go out there and prove myself as a basketball player and, and be the foundation of something great, you know, as far as winning an NBA championship and being, being able to go out there every night and compete against the best talent that the world had to offer. And for all that to happen in Detroit, I said it was real special. It was his work ethic. Um, he was a real hard work. Um, pick up your, your lunch pail type of guy. And I feel like Detroit is that type of city. So once they see that in their, in their athletes and people that play for the city, uh, they gravitate to that even more and they, they fall in love with you based on that. In the early 2000s, I feel like that's when he kind of got his name and uh, he was like a worldwide known person because it's the way he played, the Afro, and his hard work. Uh, everybody knew him for that. So just remembering that, those moments, seeing them win, that was a, a big thing, because um, we haven't had champions in Detroit a long time before that. So that was a special moment to see that, inspiring to know that I can you know, go out and accomplish some great things myself. I ended up signing with N1, you know, around 2000 and, uh, you know, it was just one of those things where I didn't have a shoe deal when it was came time for me to make the decision. You know, I, I went with Air One because it's it's definitely a brand that everybody is a part of it, either directly or indirectly. You know, every time anybody's on that floor, you know, you get hit, you get bumped, you throw the ball up, everybody's screaming Air One. As far as the trash talking, you know, t-shirt goes with Air One, I just think that the, the name and one fits the brand perfect, especially when it comes to trash talking, because it don't matter what shoes you got on, don't matter what shirts you wear, you know, if you drive into the basket and you get bumped, everybody's screaming and one. At that time, the chosen one was an iconic shoe. Um, just the look of it, the shape, um, it was a different design, something that we probably never really seen before in a shoe. So that, that was a, a big thing in itself. And just seeing Ben wear it and how he 
how he gravitated to it and how he played in it, it gave you the sense of like, these are shoes to perform in and really put on your feet and go to work. I basically wore, you know, one pair of shoes at home and one pair of shoes on the road. So I was just basically wearing two pair of shoes the whole season. You know, the trainer, they tried to change the shoes a couple of times and, you know, I told them I'm not superstitious or whatever, but it just ain't no need. And, you know, I still got them. They still at the house. They're going in the trophy case. You know, ain't no, no trophy in that case, no more important than those shoes because no matter how great you are as a shooter, rebound or whatever, you can't get there. You can't do it. So you need a good fast shoe to take you where you need to go. I mean, post championship, man, that night, you know, after we walked off the floor, man, back into the locker room, we, you know, popping champagne and, you know, enjoying your teammates, man, enjoying the moment of winning a championship. You, you make it memories for life. You know, she got a belt made for um, all the players, all the coaches, you know, signify that we're the world champion. No matter what happened from this day forward, you know, they can never take the fact that we are world champion. You can see me and not see my ring, but if you saw me and you knew I had that, saw that belt, you knew it would signify that we was a world champion. I mean, once I got the call about, you know, possibly being inducted into the Hall of Fame, man, you gotta understand, it's a, it's a very surreal moment. You know, you wanna celebrate and you wanna rejoice, but it's not one of those type of moments yet. You know, just getting the call, you know, you might be on the ballot, you can be on the ballot for 20 years but to actually be inducted into the Hall of Fame. That spelled legacy. Everything that you worked for, everything that you accomplished from the day you picked up a basketball till today when they say that you are a Hall of Fame, everything you've done goes into that one moment of being a Hall of Fame. It don't get no higher than that. So everything I've done in my basketball life goes into that Hall of Fame with me, and it spelled legacy to me. So we ask people what type of legacy you want to build. So when you look at Ben Wallace from start to finish, everything went into building that Hall of Fame legacy. I like to tell people that you need to understand, can't nobody kill your dream but you. Can't no other man, woman, coach, player, kill a dream but you and uh and like i said that was my dream my dream was to make it to the nba that was that, that was part of my journey and you know like i said i fell in love with the struggle and you know once you embrace the struggle that is not going to be easy everything you do is going to be tough you know then everything then then everything become a little bit easier than what you thought it was going to be because you prepare for the toughest and the roughest